the Tesla Model Y is the best selling vehicle in the whole world. Well, at least for one quarter, and it did so by outselling the Toyota Corolla in all of its shapes and sizes and different names around the world. That is incredible because this is the first time a pure electric vehicle has made it to the top of the list. Despite Tesla always fighting to kind of get close, they finally got there and it's a huge day for the world of EV fans everywhere. But the question is, how did they do it considering that this vehicle is almost twice the price of the second place gas option? And to me, that really just got me thinking about the myth out there that EVs are so much more expensive than gas cars that no real average person could ever afford one. And so today, I wanna to look at how the Model Y did this, but also, is this myth still true? Certainly in the early days, EVs were a lot more expensive, but let's see what the reality is today by looking at some data and some new tools that I found online to help you figure out whether or not you can afford a new EV. First, I wanna look at the Tesla Model Y and the MSRP because this is the thing that I think a lot of people point to when they say that EVs are so expensive. It's because the sticker price, the initial purchase price is more generally than gas cars. But as you'll see here, the Model Y may surprise you as to its actual price now. And so looking at the Model Y for the purchase price, we can see that the rear wheel drive, which gets up to 260 miles of range, 135 miles per hour top speed, and a 6.6 .6 second zero to 60, which is still very quick, is just about $37,500, just under that. So 37.5 is not super cheap, but, the average price of the car in the US right now, take a guess, $48,000. So that's $12,000 cheaper than the average price of a new vehicle in the US, which is incredible because this vehicle is incredible. I've had mine for almost four years now. We've used it as a family vehicle. We've done road trips on it. We've really put it through its paces. It has stood the test of time. It is an incredible value for what you get. Now that, of course, is the cheapest option. There's also the Model Y Long Range, which gets 310 miles of range and a 4.8 second zero to 60, which is incredibly quick. And that one, after the federal tax credit, is $42,490. We'll call it 42.5. Now you may look at that and go, yeah, but that's after the federal tax credit. But if you didn't know, now the federal tax credit is applied at the time of purchase. And in fact, there's even a $4,000 credit for used vehicles. So if you went to the tesla.com slash used website, you could find even cheaper options and still possibly apply that $4,000 to that purchase price, making these incredibly affordable right out of the gate. Right from the very first moment you look at this, this price shouldn't shock anybody here, especially if you're looking for a comparable gas car. But I know what you're thinking, that's a Tesla, but what about a gas car? Well, let's take a look at two that I think are fairly comparable. One is the Lexus NX350. It's a small crossover SUV from Lexus, which is in that affordable luxury, the accessible luxury category, right? It's not super high end, but it is nicer than a Toyota in this case. So this one, if you're looking at the price here, the base price is at 43,965, already more expensive than the Tesla Model Y. And of course, that's just the base model. If you think about the things that the Tesla Model Y comes with, such as autopilot, the cameras, the security system, I mean, the acceleration, all that stuff, you're probably looking at something more like the F Sport or the luxury model, putting you way higher, almost towards $50,000. So already, you know, from the very first data point you look at when you want to compare a Model Y to a comparable gas car, you're saving money. Now, you could also, if you wanted to look at, say, the BMW X3, you can probably argue all little details about this. There's way too many BMWs to really kind of nail down the exact one. But again, you're looking at essentially more money out the gate with the MSRP, not to mention all the other savings. And when we look at those savings, we see that for fuel alone, so electricity versus gas, you're saving about 60%. So think about how much you spend now per month if you have a gas car, and then minus 60% of that, or times 40%, however you wanna do it. And you'll end up with essentially a general idea of what you would be spending for a comparable electric vehicle. And this is where the idea of an e-gallon comes from. So when it comes to electricity, it's not normal for us to think in terms of per unit pricing, 
which the unit of measure often is a kilowatt hour. And so that maybe if you're you looking at your electric bill at your house, you're used to seeing that number, but most people aren't, especially not when it comes to a vehicle. So what we're trying to do is come up with an equivalent metric, a way to compare you know, miles per gallon to watt hours per mile. At the end of the day, what we're trying to get down to is the cost per mile. And that right there will sort of normalize out any other external factors. So depending on where you live, the electricity costs and the gas costs are your two biggest things. Plus the efficiency of the EV measured in watt hours per mile and then the miles per gallon. If you compare all those things, that's how you can objectively look at how much you're gonna save by just fueling an EV versus fueling a gas car. And to dive a little bit deeper into the fuel savings, the Department of Energy blessed us with the fact of the week number 1186, showing the state-by-state -state comparison of an e-gallon to a gas gallon. And uh, I looked at that and said, ah, it's basically unreadable. So uh, I made my own chart because, you know, that's uh, a thing that I like to do. And in my chart, I tried to compare it a little bit better so you could even see it. What you're seeing here is the electricity in blue and then the gas in orange. So the average price of gas here is fairly consistent. As I, as I scroll down, you'll see the different states. California, we have, you know, the more expensive one or whatever. But I wanted to see kind of how these all rank up because it, you know, those two things don't tell me much. So I created a second chart here, which shows me the percent savings. So what we're looking at in this chart with the green bars is the actual percent savings per gallon that you have. So 251% in the state of Washington, 240% in Oklahoma, North Dakota, Missouri, Idaho. So the thing that was interesting to me is that when you look at these states that are on the top in terms of the best savings for going electric, it's all because they have extremely cheap electricity. Now, there's reasons why that is, but you may have thought, oh, this is only good for people in California or people on the coasts or this or that. But as you can see, a lot of the states that would benefit the most or drivers in those states like you would benefit the most are not on the coasts. And that to me was an interesting finding when I started looking at this. So what you're doing here again is comparing the cost difference between driving a, a, a gallon of electricity versus a gallon of gasoline. And so that to me was just really stood out as, as an interesting fact here. Again, proving just how much better EVs are on efficiency when it comes to fuel. And of course, when it comes to saving money on electricity, there are different ways you can accomplish that. One of which that I'm a big fan of is adding solar panels to your house. And for that, I partnered with energysage.com. So almost a decade ago, when I first got solar panels, I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't know where to begin looking. I certainly didn't want a bunch of installers showing up at my house or salespeople trying to convince me of something when I didn't know anything. So I found Energy Sage back then and we formed a partnership to help you actually get quotes for your home and compare them all side by side with a beautiful dashboard that's laid out and just explains all the different things to consider, like the types of panels, the warranty, the inverters, the price per watt, whether or not you want batteries, etc. And so Energy Sage is someone that I always recommend. And right now, being springtime in the US is the best time to look at whether or not solar is right for you if you don't have it. You can head over to bensolens.com slash energy sage, or I'll put a link down in the description but here's how it works. You head over to the website, answer a few questions about your home and your situation, and it will show you your potential savings. And then if you want, you can take the next step, upload your information and start getting quotes. Now they'll never share your information with an installer until you select them. So you're not gonna get bombarded by a bunch of people trying to sell you stuff that you don't really know what you need yet. And so that's what I love about this service. It's absolutely free to you. There's no cost, there's no anything else. The installer dollars on the back end. If they're selected, we'll have to pay a commission and that's how the business works. So Energy Sage has been in the business of helping homeowners like you and like me for years now and I highly recommend them for going solar. So check them out at bensolens.com slash energy sage and let me know how it goes because I love hearing the stories about everyone that's done it. We've had over 2,000 people go solar right now and after, you know, that's tens of thousands of people that have submitted the application. So it's a huge deal and one that I am really proud of and I know you're going to love it. So give it a 
to go. Let me know what you think and we'll talk more about that in the future. But the savings don't end with just fuel savings. There's also maintenance costs. And so the Consumer Reports study that they did back in 2020 showed us that EVs are about half as expensive to maintain as a gas car. So think about that. There's no spark plugs. There's no oil changes. There's no transmissions to flush. None of that stuff exists. There are just very simple moving parts in an EV, making them almost maintenance free. There really is hardly anything to do in terms of the actual motor and all that. The only thing you'll really spend money on are tires. In my experience, I've spent more money on tires there, but that's about it. I mean, I even had my first Tesla for about five years and never had to change the brakes because of the regenerative braking. So EVs have a tremendous benefit in maintenance savings as well as fuel savings, which we already talked about. But I know what you're thinking. What about the battery? You're gonna have to replace it. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Here's the reality. When it comes to EV batteries, if you had to actually replace one out of warranty, yes, it could be very expensive. But you're probably never gonna be in that situation. And here's why. There is a federal mandate in the U.S. that requires companies warranty their batteries from 8 to 10 years up to 100,000 miles. That's going to cover, you know, 8-ish years of driving, depending on how much you drive, maybe more. And so that right there means that it's longer than most people are going to keep their EV. Then on top of that, if you were in a situation where you were buying an older EV, which I do recommend, you can also get extended warranties on them. So again, you can extend that warranty for five and sometimes even eight more years, probably longer than you're going to keep it. Now in that time frame, the way that the warranties work is it's not that it's just on or off. The battery either is completely dead or, or you know, is 100% good. What happens is over time, it won't hold as much of a charge, especially the older lithium ion cells versus the new iron phosphate cells. And so with that, what the companies have to do is replace it if the charge level gets below a certain percentage of the original state of charge. And so that's one thing to consider as well is that you may get a battery replacement even though it still works. So let's put that out of the way, that eight to 10 years, the battery's gonna be fine, right? You're not gonna have to worry about it, it's gonna be warrantied. Outside of that, there are some other options, including refurbishment, where you can replace your battery there with another used battery. There are several companies in California I know that do this, and that is significantly cheaper and sometimes yields even a better result where you get more energy out of it. You get a bigger battery than you had in your old model. And so this is kind of a cool thing that it actually makes that a lot cheaper if again, you had to even go down this path. And then the worst case scenario is that you actually have to scrap the battery. What does it do? Does it just go in a landfill? Of course not. Those metals in there are very expensive and very precious, and they are going to get recycled. There are several companies doing this, uh, one actually from the former chief technology officer, J.B. Straubel of Tesla, and then there's another one that my friend Zach had to review, which is really cool, this company in Phoenix, where it the EV battery literally goes up in a, a, a conveyor belt, drops into this machine, this vat of chemicals and then this kind of grinder and spits out the actual raw metals. It's fascinating how it works. So they're getting recycled, you can refurbish them, and the warranties are very good. So having to actually come out of pocket, say 15 grand for a battery replacement, I think is unrealistic. It could happen, but if you're smart and paying attention, it probably won't. And so I wanna leave you with a link, some, some tools to actually empower you to do this comparison on your own. Because of course, I can look at my numbers and I've done that many times here. I can give you other averages and things like that, but nothing is as relevant as your actual cost of electricity, your actual cost of gas and miles per gallon, all those factors. So the Department of Energy has blessed us again with a tool here at the Alternative Fuels Data Center. Here, you're able to select different vehicles. These are gas vehicles, their electric vehicles. You can punch in the price. Maybe you are shopping one right now, and then it will use all the rest, the miles per gallon, the watt hours per mile, etc. You can punch in the actual price that you spend on gasoline in your area. It'll say get results, and then it will show you a objective comparison there. It'll look at your fuel usage, electricity usage, and the operating costs and the cost per mile. That's that thing that makes sense to me, but not something we normally talk about. And then down below, it'll even graph the results for you. So you can see over the lifespan of these vehicles, how much you'll be saving. In this example here, I took the X3 and the Lexus NX350 against the Model Y. And you can see at the five-year mark, the Model Y looks like you'll be right around 50 
60, maybe $60,000, call it. The NX350 is about $65,000. And then the BMW is all the way up there towards $87,000. So I just wanted to share this tool with you as a way to really dive deep. I, again, think that this is a great way to start. And from there and from videos like this, hopefully you're starting to realize that EVs are actually a better deal and you're going to save a, quite a bit of money, especially now that the MSRP has come down to be comparable to similar gas vehicles. And yes, I know that you know all of this already, but I wanted to make this video because this is a common misconception out there, a EV myth. And now that we have new fresh data on it, more data, I thought it made sense. So if you're someone that already knew all this and want to share it with someone else that's maybe skeptical or still brings up those little myths every now and then when you mention an EV or that you have an EV, send them this video. Let them know that there is an objective analysis here. I didn't even come up with any of these numbers by the way. These are all from government studies or from consumer reports or big institutions that have a real high bar when it comes to the credibility of their data. This wasn't just one anecdote. So send this video to them. Hopefully this will help open their eyes. I know it's always we're always stuck in our own ways, but hopefully by looking at examples like this and freeing the data, we'll be able to all come to a better understanding of the truth around electric vehicles. That's it for this one, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you back here next time.